All right. Hey, everybody. Ryan Logan here again uh, with Amazing Marketing Co. We are uh, today I'm going to show you how to use a keyword um, research software or tool in order to kind of come up with uh, the keywords that you want to use for your launch. A uh, couple of quick things, just kind of diving in. Uh, when it comes to launching, I, I'm a big, big supporter of this, that relevance, 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 right? So uh, there's a couple areas in which relevancy can kind of be built towards your listing. Um, and some of those have to do with let, uh, you can suggest certain things to Amazon according to the, what your listing SEO is, um, the browse nodes as well as far as your category. But then you can also, uh, what helps to assert that as well is going to be your purchase history, uh, frequently bought together, cross sales, those types of things. Um, just in case you're having a hard time um, selling in a certain category because you're not allowed to put that type of stuff into your listing, um, but you can advertise to it, then one of the things that you can do is just seek to um, target that as far as PPC goes. And then sometimes you can build up relevancy there just through purchase history. Um, so with relevancy being the, the big important thing here, the main thing that we try to do here is just find the root search terms. Uh, I'm going to share an example right now of a, of a small flashlight. Uh, it's kind of the root keyword because it is a small flashlight, but then we can kind of expand on that and find a better uh, root keywords or search terms associated with that. Uh, the main thing is that we find those, what are the what are the root search terms, and then we narrow it down to what's more relevant for us. And then from those that are relevant to us, we further narrow it down to what are the ones that actually have buying intent. Um, and the reason for that, uh, well, actually, here's, here's kind of the A format that I use. Um, if there are multiple root keywords, uh, for example, this one is a small rechargeable uh, USB flashlight. So it's a USB rechargeable flashlight. Uh, so there are a couple things that are kind of root keywords that like small flashlight, rechargeable flashlight, um, et cetera. And we can actually narrow those down even more and come up with the long tail keywords that we want um, associated with those. I'm going to show just one of those. So I've, I found the root keyword already. I found another root keyword specifically that it could be narrowed down to even more. And I built this out already. Um, you guys can do something the same. A lot of times with the client, I will just do this. It's unnecessary for me to do multiple, um, ex unless there is multiple applications, uh, multiple things that this keyword is super relevant for that we want to build an index for. So this is how I kind of format it, and I'll actually show you in a Google Doc as well, but on one column, I actually use usually like two columns in space. It'll be relevant search terms, um, and I get I get to those last. The very first thing that I actually build is my negative phrase, my negative phrase match, and that is just a single word um, that I'm going to put into a negative phrase match, uh, either in my narrowing down using the software, or actually a lot of times I'll actually take those negative phrase matches and I'll actually insert those into the automatic campaign when I create campaigns. Um, and there's strategies behind that too. And then there's negative exact, and I use those ones mainly in the campaigns as well for either broad phrase or auto campaigns um, that I'm like, hey, I already know that, yes, there's part of this I'm relevant for, but the extension of that word I'm not. Um, and so I'd really try to um, narrow those down. And then competitor names as well. Uh, competitor names are always going to, I'm actually going to put those under, uh, when I narrow them down, I put them in the negative phrase column technically, but I like to know who my competitors are. So I leave them in their own column while I build it out and then I eventually move it under the same one. So this is uh, another, and then after, after I have all that done and I have things narrowed down to what I believe are my relevant keywords as far as the root keywords, then comes, I try to narrow it out according to, or even further according to what is the buying intent of these keywords. So just to kind of go over that, this is, uh, it kind of goes over this, okay? So uh, there's different buying, there's different intents on Amazon. So there's browsing intent. There's sometimes an intent of someone who they're specifically looking to buy a competitor. And there's the actual shopping or purchase intent. Um, the way that this kind of looks is the browsing people, there's little intent to buy at the moment. Unless, and this is an exception, unless they find exactly what they're looking for and they go, hey, this is great. This is what I want. You can usually find these in the form of like short tail keywords, uh, mainly the root keyword itself. They put in small flashlights. They don't know exactly what they're looking for. But as they're looking, they go, holy cow, 
I actually don't think I want to buy batteries all the time. I think I want a small rechargeable flashlight. And as they go, as they get closer and closer to their purchase decision, they tend to use a little bit longer longer tail keywords um, in order to narrow down their search so they can be, mo be more specific about what they want, right? Um, uh, they can, like I said, it, it's sometimes, especially during launch, um, I don't try and focus on, on browsing ones. If I am killing it in a category, if I am killing it on the, the purchase intent keywords, I'll usually expand out to the browsing um, or I'll use that as part of the top of the funnel, right? See what, see what kind of works. But generally, uh, I would like to focus on the intent to buy keywords. Okay, competitor search terms. Um, those are ones that are being searched specifically for a competitor, right? Uh, sometimes you don't actually know that they are. And when you use these software tools, you're like, oh, that's relevant for me. Um, but if you click on the link to it, you'll actually be like, wow, like they're actually specifically looking for a product name or a brand name um, that that maybe you were it was unknown to you or un that it was actually a brand competitor, right? So if you end up being unsure, you end up looking it up and being like, actually, that's a brand name or that's a specific product name. I think what I need to, do, one of the ways that I, I check on that is if, if I have access to the brand tools, um, there's, um, you can actually look up that specific keyword and you'll see how much, um, uh, what the basically conversion pool is for that specific keyword. And you'll see a lot of times if it's a specific branded keyword, like some out, it's an outrageous amount of that market share for that keyword uh, as far as the purchases and conversions for that market share on that search term, it's really, really, really high. And usually it's like, okay, that's, that's actually a competitor keyword, even though it seems like it's super broad. Uh, my favorite, right? The shopping. Okay, they've already sorted through the minutia. They know and they have a specific type ingredient or um, application that they're looking for, and they use that. It's usually in the form of a long tail keyword. Okay, um, and then this is if you haven't seen my other video, but I actually go through kind of how to set up a keyword funnel and what's the purpose of that. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go jump over to what it looks like on a sheet, um, as well as. I use Helium 10 for this, and so I'm going to show you how I kind of process it with Helium 10. All right, so here I am at Helium 10. When I use Helium 10, first thing that you do is you just come over uh, to Keyword Research, you tap on it, and you just go down to the magnet, and I just put in the, the root keyword or one of the root keywords. Um, and as I go, uh, it, and then it produces it, I usually sort it, sort it sort it by search volume and then what i do is i open up a google document and i um i'll put in here the, a couple things that i'm looking for if i'm doing this for a client i want to know the unique selling features that are right there um, or the features about the product so i know how to narrow it down so i know that i'm looking for keywords that are specific so for example this this product it's a small flashlight the features on it are usb it's small it's an led flashlight and it's actually rechargeable um, I I've already kind of pre vetted this, so I do know that I will eventually narrow down my choices. Um, but if I don't, usually I'll leave this at this blank, and if I go through and narrow down my choices, then I'll add these in. Uh, just for notes for me, so when I'm going back and doing keyword research again later on, if I need to, I know that I've done certain, certain narrowing with the software. Um, and then I can also, you can narrow, and then there's other ways that I narrow it down as well. Uh, so for example, as I'm going through uh, my big thing is I already went through this, and this is just kind of the end result here. Um, these are the ones that are relevant, and I usually keep kind of two columns in between just in case, uh, usually because I want the phrase, and I also want the search volume associated with it. But then I've got negative phrases that I did. And so as I go through, if, if for example, light, I didn't want that, I would just copy that. I would double-click on it for Helium 10. I would double-click on it, copy come over to the PPC, uh, to the doc, and I would come down here and I would just insert it, right? Um, I would insert it here in my negative phrase um, because flash light I like, and that's usually a, a combined word, but just light, um, I know that that's gonna be like an LED light or something that might be in a bedroom or, or the fancy stuff, right? Um, I also know that there's certain things like batteries um, that I'm not going to want. Um, and so if I come in here, I don't want people to be looking at batteries and I don't even want to see them in, um, my searches. 
Let's see, flashlight, batteries. Yeah, so these ones are kind of all good, but that's that's kind of what I do. I go down and I, I do that. And as I go through, like I said, I have here the phrase. So I don't want to put in the whole AA batteries because I want to just, I just want to exclude all of batteries in general. So I do that, right? And uh, that's kind of where it comes down to me for this. Is that, uh, there was one that was flashlight with a clip. My product does not have a clip. I don't want to show up on that. So I just put in clip so that anything that has to do with clips, if it's flashlight with clip or a clip on a flashlight, um, or clip on flashlight, it excludes that automatically. Um, uh, I'm not doing a multi-pack, uh, so that's, it's a single flashlight is my product. Right now, there's no variation of that. And so I, if there's anything that's a pack, I exclude that. It's not multi, it's not a tactical flashlight, it's not for defense, key chain, key chain, it's not laser black. And I just go through and I put all these as far as negative phrases in here. Um, and uh, then over here, if there's some specific ones, I did put these in, and this is what I would do. Um, like, I know I put them here for AA and AAA batteries, but also magnetic light, um, camp light, LED light, magnetic light. Um, these are all kind of already automatic. I put these over in negative phrase, but I also put them in negative exact um, for purposes that I actually use later. But uh, then these are the competitors uh, that I already know. So the, the Streamlight, Olight, Phoenix, Surefire, Nebo, these are all different flashlight um, searches. This is actually their brand name, right? So Stinger, Duracell, Maglite, et cetera. So I put all those, I end up taking all every single one of these, the negative phrase, and I go all the way down. And I copy that column and I come over here to... Um, I end up opening up over here in the listing optimization Frankenstein and I'll paste all these in here. And then I'll also come over here and grab all the competitors. Um, and I'll put these in, put a enter to another one and then go. And then it usually has different options here, but I'll hit remove duplicates, convert to lowercase, add commas with space. Um, it has removed special characters. That's just in case they're typos. And then I hit process. Now over here, you're going to see that all these show up because I want, because I'm using um, magnet, I want a comment in between every single one of these because then I come up here and every single one of these, I can exclude phrases that contain my phrases that I don't want in there, right? So then I hit apply, goes on down. Um, and it helps exclude those. Now I've already gone through all this, so I already know that I went through this. Now there were hundreds and hundreds of keywords, so I already know that I want to, I want to um, thousands of keywords. So 5,000, 8,000, 5,864. I still want to narrow that down. And so there was a few things that I did that I was like, you know, a lot of times the longer tail keywords are what I want. Flashlight is way too broad. Someone's going to look for that, and they're either and they don't know exactly what they're looking for. I know I don't want a single one. Sometimes a, a like two. Um, is even um, in this specific one, uh, long tail keywords wouldn't really actually start taking effect until about three. So I put in that my minimum word count that I want is three. Um, and then I narrow that down and see what happens. And then we've got all of these flashlight high lumens, all these other ones. So this is good. People are looking specifically for something like that. If I don't have that, I then start taking, once I've narrowed it down a little bit more, um, according to maybe the word count that I want, and I see stuff like this, I go, oh, I don't have, um, you know, uh, what is this, a hundred thousand, a million lumens? That's outrageous. So I use, I'll copy that and I'll paste that in there, right? Um, and then I'll put, I'll add that into my negative phrases. Um, over time, I was like, okay, the search volume, I don't necessarily need when I'm at launch. I don't usually don't want to compete for something that's this high right away um, as far as if i'm doing a manual campaign i'd rather have ones that are shorter or that have less search volume and so i knew that beforehand and so i was like okay i want a search volume of uh my my maximum search volume i would do is six thousand and so i narrowed by that again and then if in this kind of category it's a little bit more interesting um sometimes i'll find something right here and i'm good I'm good to go. Uh, there's still 3,000 here that is uh, a little bit wild. 
So then comes the next thing that I'll do, and this is why I have these is the features. I already know that it's USB, it's small LED rechargeable. And so what I do is I try and take this and say, okay, what's the, the main denominating factor here? And then this is kind of where I break it out according to root keywords. Um, and I go, okay, LED re rechargeable, um, I'm going to go with rechargeable. And I show, phr show phrases that contain, and I put rechargeable in there, and I hit apply. And then this narrows things down for me, where all of a sudden I have a lot longer tail keywords here that have a little bit higher search volume. Some of them do, but some of them are specifically what I am looking for, like small rechargeable flashlight, right? That's perfect for me. Small USB rechargeable. Um, yeah, and so then what, what I did there is I ended up taking those and I sorted those down and I downloaded it into a CSV. You do that by coming up, hitting export up here at the top. I, you can either do CSV or Excel. I downloaded it and I moved, I kind of moved these around a little bit. I really only want the search volume. I use the magnet IQ score if I really want it um, as far as a judgment place. And then I find, you know, 10 to 15, give or take a little bit of what I think are, you know what, these are the ones I'm going to go after. These are the ones that I think probably have the some good buying intent that I can really go after. And this is where I make those campaigns. So there you have it. That's how I go ahead and I, that's how I do my uh, product or my keyword research. Um, so I hope that helps. Cheers.